Thank you very much, everybody. Mr. Schieffer, guest in the dais. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, when I received the invitation to be here today, uh, I wanted to be here. I wanted to be here because not only it was an opportunity to uh, be with my good friends, colleagues, uh, Fred, Mike, Yubi, Larry, uh, but it also, it gives me the opportunity to uh, express how I felt, how I feel about the rest of the fellows, men and women, who served in Vietnam. When we came home February and March of 73, those of us that were held in the POW camps of North Vietnam, we received homecomings. There were parades for us. There were celebrations for us. But for the rest of them, the rest of you folks, you didn't have it. So I'm so glad that after all these years, the leadership of the county has taken the steps to publicly recognize you for your contribution and for your service. And I wanted to be part of that. I recall that when you folks came home, you weren't treated very well, many of you. There were boos, there were catcalls, you were called names. You were stereotyped in many ways with, as the bad guys. But the truth is that it was just the opposite. You were the good guys. You were the ones that answered the country's call. You were the ones that signed your name on that blank check for the American people to be paid if you lost your life. And in all that turmoil that was going on at that time, you were the ones that did your job. It's been a long time since those days. And as you heard earlier, we've learned a lot. Primarily, and one of the most important things for me is that no longer do you blame the warrior for the policies, right or wrong, of the war. So I wanted to be here to also say thank you, to share with you a special day, a day that you richly deserve. I am very, very proud to be here. Now these fellows in front of me, Fred, Mike, Hubie, Larry, I know what every one of them is thinking. I'm glad it's you up there, Everett, <laughs> not me. And as you heard and saw on the video screen, uh, I was the first one shot down at, in the Tonkin Gulf as a result of the Tonkin Gulf incident, which, by the way, I was part of that uh, also. So I was the first occupant, American occupant, of the prison complex that we later called the Hanoi Hilton. And as the fellows used to come in, later on and join, others began to join us. I, you know, I'd often get asked, how does it feel to be the first one here, Ev, at this dismal, this dismal place? And I would always try to tease them and say, well, if you wanted to get a good room, you had to come early. <laughs> but the bottom line is that uh, it didn't take long to recognize that if we were going to survive that experience, we were going to have to really stick together. 
we're really going to have to work together. And all we had to work with were our core values, our principles, and each other. And these were the same core values that we all, we all get as we grow up from our homes, our, our families, our schools, our churches and places of worship. And then later on, as we go through our military training. And basically, they are love of country, belief in God, and commitment to each other. And we know that we have the love of our families and friends. And we found ourselves facing a captor, a captor whose goal was to break our spirit, to break our will. As they used to tell us, you will be here until you no longer have the will to fight back. You no longer have the will to resist. And what they really wanted was to rob us of our soul, to take our being as Americans. And we had no choice but to organize, to form a underground presence unit where we learned and created a, a method of communicating by tapping on the wall, as you saw there, where we did whatever we could so that we can maintain that unity and, and, and stay together. And it not only was it extremely useful for the unit cohesion, but also it was extremely useful so that we could keep each other going. When we had our down days, the other guy would raise our spirits. When we had our up days, our job was to raise his. And besides that, we helped each other in every way. And you heard earlier Senator Cardin mentioned what, how John McCain described his conditions. And I'll tell you something. John McCain's a good example of our commitment because if it was not for his cellmates who fed him, who bathed him, who cleaned him, because John could not do that for himself for months, John would not be with us today. This gentleman right here, Colonel Fred Cherry, he, was, he had terrific injuries. And he was by himself in a cell, just within a few yards from where our cell was. And we couldn't get over there to help him. And we knew he was in pain. And all we could do was tap so he could hear us to keep his spirits going. You remember that, Fred? And all we could say was, Keep it up, Fred. God bless you. Yeah. Keep it going. He did. So, I am proud to say that we were successful in these endeavors. And as you also noted on the, on the video that our motto was that no longer, no didn't matter how long it would take, we knew that someday we'd come home. And when we did, we would go home with our honor. And that was our motto. And later on, as we heard that there were peace talks going on in Paris, and things were picking up, and our treatment picked up, and we knew that the day was getting closer, the excitement seemed to build up. And finally, the day came, and what, February 1973, and we returned. And I just have to tell you that I had the opportunity to serve with a bunch of heroes, the guys here, others that were in those cells. And I, it, is, it was an honor for me, and it is an honor for me to serve in the company of heroes like this. And it, it is also an honor for me to be here to participate because I'm proud that I am part of your group and I can say that I'm also a Vietnam vet. You know, 
God had a plan for me. There's no way I should have escaped that aircraft going in, but I did. And perhaps we could say there's no way I could have come out of that eight and a half years in a fairly decent condition, enable me to go on with my life, but I have, and I've been very fortunate. And I met my wife, Tammy, and we've raised two boys. We've been in Montgomery County for 39 years, and this has been very, very good. Montgomery County has been a great place to call home. Ike Leggett, I don't know where you are, <laughs> but I want to thank you for making the county such a nice place. Congressman Chris, I want to thank you for sticking around. He must be running for some office. <laughs> we, were, we raised two sons that call Montgomery County home. The oldest is an attorney, the youngest is a Navy doc. He did two tours in Iraq, serving with the Marines as a battalion surgeon. When I found out that he was going to go to, he volunteered to go to Iraq to serve with the Marines, I said, Oi, why are you doing this to me and your mother? <laughs> I said, I thought you were going to be a Navy flight surgeon on a carrier, you know, clean sheets, three square meals a day, air conditioned rooms. He said, Dad, I said, I know, you want to go. So he did. But we have, a lot of young people today. And what we veterans did, I think in Vietnam, I just like to state it again. I think we set a, the tone. I think we're, you folks out there are good role models for our younger generation, for our future service men and women. You've done a good job. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with my fellow colleagues. <clears throat> I know I'm going to hear from them later. That's okay. <laughs> Colonel Allen, whatever you are, I want you to know that we also had our FNGs. <laughs> and here's some of them right here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an honor to be with you today. Thank you so much.